It's AutoNation's Black Friday Used Car Sales Event. Now through Sunday only, take advantage of reduced prices on thousands of used cars, trucks, and SUVs. All makes, all models, on sale. Domestics, imports, luxury, on sale. This is one Black Friday used car sales event you can't afford to miss. Hurry to the AutoNation store near you today or shop now at AutoNation.com. Jack Smith, the longtime thorn in Donald Trump's side, is exiting stage left, but taking with him $50 million worth of taxpayer dollars. What a shame. What a disgrace. That's the topic of today's Bold and Blunt, and I'm your host, Cheryl Chumley, giving you a Christian conservative look at today's news, politics, culture, and events. Jack Smith closes up shop, defeated more by voters than by jurors. That's one recent headline from the New York Times, and it continues like this. The special counsel, meaning Jack Smith, will leave behind a complex legacy, having amassed considerable evidence against Donald J. Trump, but having lost key legal battles that could constrain future investigators. Leave it to the New York Times trying to gasp out some final breath in the takedown of Donald Trump. Had Jack Smith amassed considerable evidence against Donald J. Trump, as the New York Times wrote, then Jack Smith wouldn't be snaking away from all the prosecutions that he has launched against Donald J. Trump. He wouldn't have this record of failures against Donald J. Trump had he been able indeed to amass that considerable evidence that the New York Times is claiming that he had. So let the left have its tears. Let the left go cry, go cry uh, a river of tears over the failures of Jack Smith to take down Donald Trump. The rest of America, the rest of sane America, knows that this whole thing was a deep state attack on Donald Trump. And as Donald Trump himself has pointed out several times, not just against Donald Trump, but against all Donald Trump supporters. So it's good news. Jack Smith is taking off, leaving town, and leaving alone Donald Trump for at least the next four years. Before I get into more of this, I want to quickly mention, if you like Bold and Blunt, you may get Bold and Blunt at edify.app, at Real Life Network, at WashingtonTimes.com, where you may also subscribe to my three times a week newsletter. It comes out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It's called Bold and Blunt with Cheryl Chumley. Go to the bottom of the WashingtonTime.com's page, find the newsletter section, click on it, and you can just enter your email address and you will be subscribed. You know, there are many newsletters on that page as well that you ought to check out. The Higher Ground newsletter, um, my work appears in that as well. Uh, Not all of it, but, uh, you know, some of it. And the rest of the newsletter is all about what is taking place in the world of news, but from a faith-based perspective, right? So if you want to know what's really taking place from biblical views, then check out Higher Ground Newsletter. There's also one uh, special for national security and uh, crime issues, law enforcement issues, foreign affairs even it's called threat status you want to check that one out they do great work on china the looming threats from china which are many which are about to recede a bit under donald trump anyhow go to that page and uh sign up for bold and blunt but check out the rest of them as well and if you already are a subscriber really thank you very much i appreciate your support but you can also get bold and blunt wherever podcasts are available. I want to quickly read from this Newsweek piece because this is this is the next phase of Jack Smith. Uh, another gasp, right, to sort of, you know, throw some darts at Donald Trump before Inauguration Day. Newsweek reports Jack Smith plans to release report before Donald Trump is sworn in, CNN says. So Newsweek is taking this info from CNN. But I like Newsweek better than CNN, so I'm going to read from Newsweek. Special counsel Jack Smith 
plans to release his final report on the federal investigations into former President Donald Trump before Inauguration Day on January 20th, according to a CNN report citing a source close to the matter. Always with the anonymous sources, right? Jeez, can we get away from that? Can we, can we, can we cite, can we name the sources for once? The report is expected to detail Smith's findings on key cases involving Trump, Newsweek writes, including including allegations of election subversion and mishandling of classified documents. Attorney General Merrick Garland is expected to publicly release the special counsel report. Well, for $50 million, we ought to at least get a a glance at this report, right? I mean, we paid for it. We ought to get at least an executive summary sheet of it. I mean, $50 million, come on. Historically, uh, Jim Acosta interviewed CNN legal analyst Eli Honig. And so this is the quote from Eli Honig. Historically, these special counsel reports are quite detailed. I think this will be Jack Smith's last and best chance to tell his story in both cases. He's already done that to some extent through his indictments and court filings, but this will be it. This will be the historical record. Who cares about Jack Smith's story, right? Don't care about Jack Jack Smith's story. Care about the facts of the case. And the fact is, of these many cases brought against Donald Trump, is that none of them held up enough to go forward. The left, sadly for the left, never got got Donald Trump uh, behind prison bars, holding onto the bars in an orange jumpsuit, handcuffed and despondent and so forth. They never got that, that photograph moment. And for that, they are very, very sad. And Jack Smith is very, very sad. And Barack Obama is very, very sad. And all the Democrats are very, very sad, as you can see by the lunatics that they send in the street to scream and wail and cry and show how they are very, very sad. You can identify them by their pink hair and by their green hair and by the many piercings and tattoos they have on their faces and so forth. These are the people of the Democrat Party. And they're all sad and It's going to be a very sad Christmas for them, but an even sadder January 20th because this is the moment they have long dreaded Donald Trump back in the White House. Look at the attacks that have gone forth against Donald Trump. Go back in time to 2015, 2016, and really that's when they all started. When Donald Trump announced that he was going to run for president, the media just swarmed around and mocked him mercilessly. I even remember on Fox News, people uh, back when Fox News was still conservative, Fox News people mocking him and laughing and, you know, poking fun, which which is wrong. You don't do that. Whether you think somebody has a chance to win or not, you just don't sit around and take pot shots in public when they're not there to even defend themselves. But the, the mocking of Donald Trump started early on But more than that, the persecution of Donald Trump started early on. The calls for his impeachment started before he was even inaugurated. Maxine Waters, there were some in the Democrat Party. Go back and check, right? The the history's clear on this. The impeachment calls started before he was even inaugurated. And then, of course, we all went through, after the inauguration, Russia collusion, and the millions and millions of taxpayer dollars spent on that to find nothing, nothing. What? a shock, nothing. And then the impeachments and and all the time spent in Congress with the Democrats, the Democrats and their partners in the media constantly uh, persecuting and uh, making allegations against Donald Trump, the impeachment charades that went on, Adam Schiff, and, you know, how much money. It's great to be a federal uh, public servant because you have a, a... a never-ending pool of tax dollars to use 
at your disposal to take down political opponents. And you can cry and claim that you're doing it for the good of the republic, for the good of the Constitution, save America, save American liberty, because you have your, your friends in the media covering for you. Even though you are doing the exact opposite of what you claim, you are deep state politicking against political enemies, but you can get by with claiming that it's for the good of the Constitution because your friends in the media will tell everybody in America so. Smith filed, reading from Newsweek again, to drop all four felony charges related to Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election and his alleged role. Well, we're back to alleged, right? Because it was never convicted. So we got to put that little alleged back in front. Role in the January 6, 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol uh, the judge dismissed all charges against Trump in his election fraud case later that same day. There's that amassing of considerable evidence that the New York Times reported about, right? Smith also moved to dismiss the case regarding Trump's handling of classified documents found at his Mar-a-Lago estate in Palm Beach, Florida after he left office in January 2021 amassing of considerable evidence. It continues. Isn't it interesting that all the cases, all the allegations, all the charges against Donald Trump that we were told for, oh, so many months uh, to coincide with the campaign of Donald Trump for White House, for the White House office. Isn't it interesting that all those charges have just gone by the wayside? And so too, it would seem Jack Smith. But don't count on Jack Smith to just disappear completely from public view. Democrats have used this guy for a very long time to go after political enemies. And if you knew the story, the behind scenes stories of some of the outcomes of his attacks on people, you would be shocked. And so on Bold and Blunt today, I have a story from one such Jack Smith victim. Steve Stockman, you may recall his name. He was a member of Congress. He was a member of Congress during Newt Gingrich's days, but he was also a member of Congress during Barack Obama's days. And that's where he had his unfortunate run-in with Jack Smith because he actually took on Barack Obama. And for that, Barack Obama decided he must pay. And pay he did. Steve Stockman, I want to thank you so much for being on Bold and Blonde. It is great to have you here. Well, thank you for having me. It's good talking to you again. Yeah, it, it is. And, I, I, you know, you have such an interesting story. And you uh, served in Congress until you came under the fire from Jack Smith, the same guy who spent so long going after Donald Trump. Uh, talk listeners through a little bit of your story, those who may not be aware of what, what you experienced. Well, it was 10 years ago. Uh, well, first of all, I served in Gingrich's revolutionary class of 94. And then I took care of my dad who had dementia. And then I decided to run again. And I was blessed by the voters to win again. But I've always been a committed person to and faith to the Constitution and to law. And one of the things we did is we started investigating uh, Obama's dealings with Iran and other circumstances which raised the ire of Obama. And then uh, I appeared, also took on Lois Lerner, and I helped open that investigation. Uh, we did a lot of things that got him upset. But the short story is uh, Obama's very vindictive, and Jack Smith is basically his enforcer. It doesn't matter, by the way. People have this conception. It's only Republicans. It's anybody that disagrees with him. And I can tell you this. Uh, if you look at the mayor of New York City, who is a Democrat, uh, that's Jack Smith's clones that are in the DOJ and they went after him because he disagreed with the immigration policy which is really instrumental in their philosophy of turning this nation into a one party state but anyhow Jack Smith uh, has a long history of going after in fact I met people in prison uh, John Woods who uh, is in prison now uh, did the thing is uh, a state senator and his crime was he endorsed Trump. And the FBI, Cheryl, the FBI agent admitted he uh, faked the, and destroyed 
information just to can get a conviction. So Jack Smith is not bound by principles. So when you were in Congress, you uh, you rebelled against Barack Obama's far leftist agenda, right? And yes. uh, so, so when when was your first dealing with Jack Smith? When when did you first become aware that he was investigating you? And did have you ever met him in person? No. He what happened is after my theory on this. After uh, he, he for two years, I was investigated for four years. They spent twenty two million dollars. By the way, Cheryl, there was someone that stole uh, $10 billion and got five years. I was accused of, which the person never complained about it. There was only two donors, of less than a million dollars. And they spent four years, four grand juries and $22 million and convicted me of 283 years. Similar, almost similar. (laughs) His dealings are almost similar to what happened to Trump. And when I heard this, um, I gave a little 90-minute presentation, and I wanted to warn President Trump and his lawyers about what Jack Smith did to me. And I said, he's going to do the same thing. They, they, the, the way the DOJ works is like cookie cutters. And that's why I'm so happy that Gates is going to get in there and hopefully get rid of a lot of those very corrupt people. But I didn't realize it was him personally until I pieced it together. But they started investigating me literally – uh, when I got sworn back in, because I defeated, in the 90s, I defeated the chairman of the Judiciary Committee uh, who oversaw the DOJ, and he uh, was in there for 42 years. He prosecuted Nixon, uh, Ollie North. Was, his name was Jack Brooks, a very vindictive guy. And so they instantly, in 2013, started investigating me, and it's been a literally 11-year ordeal. And I haven't been able to talk about it. You're one of the first people I shared this with because... Just two weeks prior to the election, the DOJ was still issuing papers trying to get me back in prison. Oh, gee. okay. So, uh, first, how long did you spend in prison? And then, second, I understand Donald Trump commuted your sentence. That's not the same as a full pardon, but it, it, it's it's a step below it. Yes. Yeah, you're, you're spot on. You're correct. And the, and the thing is, is that uh, I was convicted 283 years, which I, I joke and say I'm only going to do half the time. <laughs> Convicted. So, so, but but uh, the, the judge who, uh, who uh, just horrible judge, to be frank, she gave me 10 years, and the normal sentence for that would have been like 18 months. She gave me 10 years, and then um, a lot of her fr- yours and my friends, who we all know from Richard Vigory and on, went to protests to uh, Trump and to the vice president Pence and said, you know, this is somebody you need to pardon and i don't know why he didn't pardon uh, other than uh, i guess it was easier to commute i'm not sure but because commutation means they, the doj can still go after me for different things right and uh but yeah i didn't i didn't know about jack smith until it started falling together and i found out his wife is very good friends with michelle obama in fact they made a movie together oh no so kidding it, yeah and, and the another thing to share which is really interesting in in uh, Henry the Seventh, go back far enough. Uh, he had a he had a lawyer who went after his enemies, much like Jack Smith, and and took money from from the citizens of England. But the interesting thing is, when uh, the king died, they arrested the lawyer and then tried him for treason, and executed him. <laughs> I'm not suggesting Jack Smith, but you know, it, maybe history would be nice if it repeated itself. You know, it's uh. It's really outrageous what Jack Smith has done. He's really abused his office. I mean, it's horrendous, and I really hope he doesn't get away with what he's done, not just to me, but to uh, John Wood, Senator John Woods, myself, Trump, and so many others. There, there's uh, a lot of people that aren't publicly known that he prosecuted and were successful and get them in prison wrongfully. So, so what is it like? Because Trump suffered under Jack Smith's aggressive prosecutorial uh, stances. And so many others, J6 people have been persecuted for their political beliefs. There's a lot of this deep state type of persecution going on. What does it feel like to come under the ire of someone like Jack Smith? Well, I was kind of the tip of the spear. When I uh, first got indicted, uh, you can see there's a clip, maybe I can send it to you later, but there's a cliff of me coming out of the, the federal building saying this is a deep state and everybody from all my Republican congressmen, friend, everybody 
ridiculed it and mocked it and and wasn't aware. The thing that was so great about Trump's uh, election is he exposed it. I mean, up to that point, it was going on. A lot of people would be thrown in prison wrongfully. And when you're by yourself, I don't have the billions that Trump has or the infrastructure. So when it, when it came down on me, you have the entire federal government on you. It really uh, put me in a bad situation. In fact, uh, after getting out of prison, I had to have three heart surgeries and things like that because when I got COVID, they refused to treat me. And it's our friend Richard Vigory and Patty who, who rose up and said, you got to take this guy to the hospital. And there's some other things they did to me while I was in prison, which were horrible. And that's why I wept for the people in J6. What they've done to them is horrible. The BOP, the Bureau of Prisons, you should not have under the DO, the Department of Justice. It should be a separate unit because when you're when you're in a custody, you're, you're in the custody of the people that prosecuted you who likely could have right. been politically prosecuted. They still have their tentacles in you. It's horrible how they treat you. It, I, I really pity those guys are still in prison. That, that is an interesting conflict of interest to bring to light, and I think maybe uh, not so many people are aware of that. Uh, good point. Hey, can, can you talk a little bit about when you, as, as a former congressman, are in prison? What is prison like for a former congressman? Well, there's a myth out there that we get, or uh, Republicans, conservative Christians do not get special treatment to the opposite. Well, we get special treatment in a negative way. Uh, we had a lot of guards, prison guards who, who were uh, mass that said BLM. Oh. When I was first in prison, I was told, warned repeatedly, not telling anybody I was a former congressman, but it always leaked out. And, uh, and one of the other members, ironically, of my prison unit was a it was a Democrat who got convicted. He was rapidly pro gun, and he got convicted of selling machine guns to gangs. <laughs> so it's like, you know, hypocrisy. But he warned me too. He said, "Don't let people know." So I tried to stay to myself. I grew a beard. I, you know, I, I, I changed a little bit so I didn't stick out. But the thing is, is that the guards know who you are, and they harass you um, continually, especially. Like when Richard sent out that, that fax and, and things like that, they, they take the retribution on you. And uh, I was put in solitary. Uh, they at one point took away my, I'm a diabetic, insulin dependent. They took away my insulin. They did, they did things that were really, um, in other words, in court, it'd be very hard to prove, but it was very detrimental to, to me. And, and it was really tough for a while there, to be honest with you. But I, I served about three years and then uh, on a, Two days before Christmas, uh, two or three days before Christmas, uh, I was told by a Nigerian guard, which is kind of ironic, but he kept yelling at me, pack up your stuff, pack up your stuff. And, and then the other, guy, the other guys in the place going, oh, no, you're going to the SHU, which spell, stands for Special Housing Unit, which means solitary. That's all it means. I go, oh, no, you're going to the SHU, you're going to the SHU. And then I noticed out of the corner of my eye there was someone that, is never there after five that was there and I was packing all my stuff up and then he told me he said the, the warden wants to put you in solitary one more time I said what do you mean one more time he goes well President Trump has commuted your sentence but he wrote at the bottom of the commutation immediate release now wow. <laughs> like, you know I just like start weeping and so happy you know and everything but it, it shows you the evilness that he wanted to put me in solitary one more time just to get his little bit of flesh out of me, even though I was my sentence was commuted. But President Trump had the presence of mind to write that at the bottom. And I'm so grateful that he did that. But it took a lot of people. But there are many people still in prison that are wrongly uh, victims of Jack Smith. And they, they I don't know if your paper is covering this. I was going to send it to you. But I don't know if it's true. But I mean, you're in Washington. There's a paper shredding company truck out in front of the doj and i always joke that they're shredding papers and i think they really are i don't think it's a joke because they have that truck i don't know if you saw that or not but i think they need to be investigated and i think jack smith all his documents people also don't know this about jack smith he interfered in a peace treaty when he went over to the to the international criminal court icc 
uh, and he uh, interfered. There was a peace agreement with Bosnia, which is a historic thing. He didn't want Trump to get credit for it, so he arrested the president of Bosnia. And um, it just, it's horrible. He's so Machiavellian and so horrible in his character. I mean, to do that when we had a chance for peace over there, which had, you know, thousands of years of war and, uh, and recent war, too, where we bombed quite a bit over there under Clinton. And, and he, he did that, too. In fact, I think there's a commentary by Mike Pompeo, Secretary of State, who eviscerates Jack and what he did. And uh, he, he has no morals or scruples, to be honest with you. So just to play a little devil's advocate here, those on the left, the Democrats, would look at Jack Smith as just a hero for law and justice. And and would probably say that if conservatives had someone like Jack Smith, we would be cheering him along. How do you respond to that? No, because, look, remember during the campaign in 2016, you had, you had um, or 15, 16, if you, you had chance of lock her up lock her up and hillary had tons of evidence in fact i brought some of that out she 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 would facilitate the selling of steel to iran to make centrifuges which if people know what a centrifuge is it helps uh, enrich uranium and make plutonium uh, i mean to help make a bomb and so trump had an opportunity to play the retribution game and punish his opponents we didn't he said, for the sake of the country, I'm not going to prosecute Hillary. But then when you turn it around, they went after Trump for stuff that was so trivial. I mean, e- even the left, some of the leftist commentary is saying this is you know, crazy, the, the mm-hmm. stuff they're charging with. I mean, his business dealings is, a, is one realtor in New York said this is a common practice. And to evaluate uh, his place down in Florida for $18 million is a joke. I mean, <laughs> You know, I'll take it for eighteen. <laughs> yeah, that was a little, little of a low ball, I'd say. Yeah. So, so what do you see as next for uh, on the horizon from Jack Smith? Because you know the incoming administration is not going to have like a team of Democrats now saying, "Oh, you won fair and square. Let's work together." I suspect that they're going to have a new role for Jack Smith and his ilk. I think he will, but I also think if, if history is any evidence, he left when, when he felt he, he was really concerned that the prosecution he was committing against me and to, I think, well, by the way, I think if they had investigated my case, a lot of the stuff wouldn't happen with Trump, to be frank with you, because he was getting away with prosecuting the Congress on me, so he probably thought, hey, I can do anybody. Mm. But he left, he, he, for, he left the DOJ, it's called Public Integrity Section, he had it up for until 2015 and then he went somewhere else but then he took the overseas assignment i think to get away and to not draw attention to himself so if, if that's a history uh, my hunch is he may want to bury his head because if he pops up his head there's a lot of people now that are aware of his his ilk and also what he did and i think he he would want to cool off that's my prediction now, that doesn't mean there won't be someone to replace him for instance the guy that prosecuted me who's also good friends with obama for some reason, Bob Barr put him in charge of voter integrity, which is like putting <laughs> Willie Sutton in charge of bank robberies, you know? <laughs> it's like a really dumb idea. So, so, so look, looking ahead for you, uh, personally speaking, what, what, what is it like, uh, you know, resuming life after being in prison for three years? Is everything back to normal? Do you have words of wisdom and warning for Americans? What's your life like now? I actually, well, it's changed dramatically. You can't have something like that not impact you. I actually gave a speech to a Grover Norquist uh, group, which is a group of conservatives, and I found out from my persecution prosecution that anybody can be charged. There's a book called Three Felonies a Day, which describes how everybody in America commits three felonies. And if they want to charge you, they can. Uh, They bragged about how they could even charge Mother Teresa. The thing that I learned, which is really alarming, is there's no federal definition of fraud. That's determined by the prosecutor. So now if you take that definition, any church, any nonprofit can be charged with fraud because they said, well, you didn't do exactly what you said. Therefore, you committed fraud. And then from there, they what's called stacking. That's what you do with Trump. 
It's what you do with a lot of other people you prosecute. Then once you, quote, commit fraud, they charge you for money laundering anytime you get a check, wire fraud anytime you deposit a check. And so they can stack the charges, and that's how they get up to 283 years on a simple fraud charge. For instance, one bank note I deposited, I end up with 120 years of potential in prison for one deposit. Wow. So my thing was is trying to set out to, to alert other people of the potential harm, but it really hasn't sunk in. The other thing, Cheryl, is once I went through this, my health, uh, unfortunately, because of COVID, they did keep us in locked up seven days a week, 24 hours, except to go to the restroom, and they even brought up meals to us. So my health deteriorated, and I've been trying to recuperate. And also, I gained a lot of weight because I was just locked up. I couldn't exercise. And it was really, it even breaks the Geneva Convention. You're supposed to have at least one hour out. But because of COVID, they welded the doors and the windows shut and, and locked us in there. It was really quite horrible. So are you allowed to, uh, I don't know if this is a silly question or not, uh, but are you allowed to vote? Are you allowed to uh, own a gun? I mean, it, it... no, I can't vote and I can't own a gun. Wow. And, uh, but I have to tell you this, because they, they were prosecuting me, even filing charges two weeks before the election. But when I stay up all night before concerned about the election and I stay up all night watching the election, but a burden uh, has been lifted from my shoulders now and I think I can more freely tell my story because even if you look at Steve Bannon and other people that have been commuted or, or pardoned, they never give up on you. Once they have you like a shark has their bait in mouth, they never uh, stop pursuing you. And that's what happened to me. And I don't have the resources that a lot of other people have. You know, I, I live in a middle class, unlike, unlike uh, Harris, I really do live in a middle class house. So, and uh, and so it was really a heavy burden to uh, to carry by myself, and and I'm able to speak out now. In fact, like I said, this is really the first time I fully discussed it publicly, and it's on your wonderful broadcast. Well, thank you. I, I really do appreciate your sharing your story. It's very brave of you, and I, I wonder if going forward, like you said, with your sentence just commuted right now, are you looking? Are you living with one? You know, looking over your shoulder, waiting for the next uh, DOJ prosecution to develop? Maybe not under this administration, but the next? Yeah, I was going to say, with Harris, I was de I don't know if I could stay in the country. But I'm hoping that I will get support for a pardon, a full pardon, which would allow me to have my voting rights back, my Second Amendment's right, and really, frankly, my First Amendment right back. And uh, I'm hoping that on the first day of January 20th, I'm on that list because they're, they're de uh, Trump's developing the list right now from what several people tell me. And I was trying to get support. So if you have any listeners that are in that circle, put my name down. That would be great wow. for a pardon. I'd be very happy. But a burden really was lifted when I saw Trump won. I was, I, I can't tell you the, the emotions I felt like, oh my goodness, I think we're, at least for a brief time, are getting a reprieve from the oppression. And had she won, I think there had been a lot of people, a lot of people prosecuted. As you know, we, we belong to an organization where they actually went after Tom Fenton and, and others in our organization, and a lot of them don't talk about it, but they were expanding who they're targeting, and it's quite alarming. Wow. Yeah, I think all of America feels that we just received a reprieve for at least four years, but maybe you and some others that you mentioned more than most. Uh, Steve, you're, you're going to have to come back on the show and talk a little bit more about how it, things develop for you under the Trump administration, especially if you do get that pardon. Well, I'm, I'm delighted to be able to communicate with you and, and it's quite an honor and i appreciate you having me on and uh, you're awesome keep up the great work <laughs> thank you thank you so much steve stockman for your fight for america and thanks for speaking so boldly on my show i appreciate it thank you and god bless you both. god bless what a story of jack smith and with recent events I guess a lot of Americans all dodged a bullet, right? A lot of MAGA Americans, America First type Americans, Trump supporting Americans dodged a bullet with this incoming Donald Trump administration because as we've seen in the news, Jack Smith is exiting stage left. Don't let the door hit you, right? Thank you for listening. If you want to subscribe to Bold and Blunt, 
you may do so at edify.app, at Real Life Network, at WashingtonTimes.com, and wherever podcasts are available. Tune in next time. And meanwhile, don't forget, stay warm, stay cool. Marketing is hard. But I'll tell you a little secret. It doesn't have to be. Let me point something out. You're listening to a podcast right now, and it's great. You love the host. You seek it out and download it. You listen to it while driving, working out, cooking, even going to the bathroom. Podcasts are a pretty close companion. And this is a podcast ad. Did I get your attention? You can reach great listeners like yourself with podcast advertising from Libsyn Ads. Choose from hundreds of top podcasts offering host endorsements or run a pre-produced ad like this one across thousands of shows to reach your target audience in their favorite podcasts with Libsyn Ads. Go to LibsynAds.com, that's L-I-B-S-Y-N, ads.com today.